What's up, guys? Welcome to Season 2 of Nindy Showcase. It is underway here on Nintendo Power Blocks YouTube channel and NGRadio.com. I'm Corey, and joining me, as always, is that magic man, that retro code, Eddie V. And today, Hello, everybody. we are taking a look at Dead Cells, one of the premier roguelite metroidvania games on switch and everything else but we're playing on switch because this is a nintendo show and it's the best place to play all your indie games which is why we're doing an indie showcase um dead cells is by developer motion twin it came out earlier this year on all platforms and let me tell you what everything on paper about this game is something that i hate it's a roguelike it's uh, ran and procedurally generated. It's a hardcore Metroidvania, which, like, I do like Metroidvanias, but I like the easier Metroidy type Metroidvanias and not the super hardcore Metroidvanias, like some of the more recent style indie games uh, that have come out. Uh, it's got to be the right Metroidvania for me, is what I'm trying to say. And on top of that, I've been I re-downloaded Castlevania Symphony of the Night on my Xbox because it's backwards compatible. I have it too, <laughs> and I've never played it, and I want to try it. <gasps> so like, Ooh. but Dead Cells is Dead Cells is the Metroidvania game everybody wanted, and it is it is fantastic. The combat's awesome, the movement, the fluidity of the combat. It's just it's just one of those games that you want to play. Because it's so fun to play. It doesn't matter like what when you die, how you die. You know, it's just just moving through the world. Just oh, it's so good, man. And now they added this stability patch to the Switch. It's like it runs like a dream. Oh, it's so good. And it's so good. Which is funny because like I didn't have that. I didn't have that problem, but probably because I was playing it a lot on uh, in handheld mode. Yeah, I mean to be fair, I didn't have. I, there were some hiccups, but there wasn't anything like that's going to diminish the game. You know, like I. I yes. Think, I think it runs fine, uh, or it ran fine. But now that this patch is in here, jeez, when did this game get so hard? Ooh, I it a is. Nice. It's so, it's so, it's so weird about uh, Dead Cells is because it's a game that when you're playing it in handheld mode, it's like the bomb biggity, but it feels weird playing it on the big screen TV with a controller. Yeah, it's, it really does. This is definitely a uh, this is definitely one of those games that feels really good in handheld mode. Like I tried to play it on the TV and I was like, this is fine, but it's not the same. <laughs> right but I do enjoy it I'm, I'm, I'm still at uh, still trying to get to the first boss and beat it yeah I've been to the first boss a few times and I just I'm not good enough at the game to like you know actually uh, get and beat the first boss but I mean I I, I think the, the just you know Dodging and, and rolling and hitting hitting enemies at the right time just feels so good. And like all the different weapons you can pick up, just ah, it just feels so good, man. Uh, but, uh, I know. The one thing that I think actually like ma makes this game work too is the music. Yes. I think it has some of the best music in in games, you know, in general, you know, and and it just it sets the mood. Ah, it just feels so good. It feels so good. It's, you know, it is to me personally. It it feels like a stylized action game in two D with rogue, uh, with rogue rule. Well, you know, with rogue rules while it being. I know I don't want to go to the sex sewers. So I don't want to do that while being a Metroid style game, Metroidvania style game. And I don't even know. And see, I, and I, it's hard calling this thing a Metroid style game. I agree because it's it it's 
it it's not it can't really be a metroid style game because it's procedurally generated right and it's, yes you can't really go find something it's just i think it's just the maze like aspect that people like to compare it to the metroidvania style games where it's like okay you can backtrack you can kind of go back and go different places once you have certain things Yes. Oh, I just found a time door. Nice. Nice. Oh, man, this helps so much. Oh, Ed, this helps so much. <laughs> so, um, so, a lot of people might have played this game. Um, and there were good stories about this game with the sale numbers that, you know, it sold very well on Switch. It did find a PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, but I think this is one the, this is one of the games that everybody or most people they got the digital version, but so many people waited for the physical. Yeah, I mean like for Switch. Like for me, like I I ended up getting both because like I like having my physical collection, but I still like to have the the indies on my Switch just permanently. Uh -huh. I'm still I'm still in that middle stage of like really struggling <laughs> with going all digital or having physical copies just because like yes you know i actually tr am thinking about like on xbox more recently i've been doing both where like i'll buy a game digitally yeah and if i really like it i'll add it to my physical collection like like tomb raider for example i've, yes. bu I've bought them all digitally but i've recently oh geez i forgot about these guys oh geez oh that that hurt real bad. The slug guys that turn into bombs and murder them. Ooh. Oh yeah. That hurt, that hurt real bad. Ooh. Oh gosh, and the the scorpions that shoot acid at you. Oh jeez. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, it, so like Tomb Raider and like The Witcher, I added to my like. I'm adding games to my physical collection that I really, really love, right? And so uh -huh. I think that's the way that I've been treating the indies on Switch, where, like, when Shovel Knight comes out physically, I will be purchasing that day one physically, oh, yeah. even though I've bought it four times digitally and once physically already, right? So, yes. uh, dude, I own that game so many places. I own it on PS4, Xbox One, Wii U, 3DS and switch digitally and i own it on wii u physically <laughs> yeah and i own it on i own it on uh i own it on uh 3ds physically i own it on uh i didn't i, I don't i didn't pick up the uh wii u version but i do have it uh digitally on Wii U because I of course I had to have the game when it first came out and then I planned on getting it on Switch yeah so I mean so oh man Shovel Knight that is a good game we did that for Nindy Showcase Season 1 oh yes everybody do check that one out oh gosh these little bugs that just oh no Oh no. Oh jeez. There's so many guys. And by so many I mean two, but they are aggressive. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh jeez. Ooh, I died. That was that was a terrible death. I lost twenty cells, Ed. I'm not very oh no! I'm not very good at this game. I just want everybody to know who's watching. I am not great at this game. My longest run is like fifteen minutes. But look, it's fine, right? It's 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 all good. It's yeah, all, it's all good. It's all gravy in the gravy chain. Uh, I'm not going through those stores. Okay, Let's I'll be see. able. Noted achievements. <laughs> so. This game started as an early access game on PC. And, uh, you know, it did very well there. And then uh, it came to console. And I think it was one of those games that people just did not pay attention to. 
Oh. I, I think the PC crowd liked it, and I know like a lot of people were kind of high on it for PC, but nobody really knew if it was going to come to consoles at first. Yes. So like, I think a lot of console gamers just never paid attention because, you know, and, and maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe it's just our zeitgeist to people. I know, I mean, I know Matt and Moose were pretty high on it, but that's, they're, <laughs> they're Matt and Moose. They, they, <laughs> they like weird stuff, right? So, <laughs> I mean, not weird. I should just say they, they like, they have a taste for yeah, different stuff. Yeah, they have a taste or... for different games than we do. And like, you know, I heard them talk about it like once or twice, but then it was like, man, whatever, it's fine. Ooh, yeah. a turret. Nice. I needed that. Oh boy, that's awesome. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Edward! I'm gonna die! <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm alive. I take it. Don't hit that thing. Ah. Ah! Crap. 15% more damage. This please. So yeah, it was uh, it's it's one of those success stories where, you know, he, the person, the team who made it, they didn't expect that it would be that big on console. But just like out of the blue, I think once they showed, once they announced that it was coming to Switch, I think that's when everybody was just like, oh, I got to get this game. Yeah, well, when they announced it for Switch. Like it was, they announced it for Switch right before I went to PAX, and uh -huh. like last year, they, I went to. Well, by the time you see this, I went to PAX last year, and like, they announced it, and I was like, oh geez, this game is awesome, and like, you know, I played it because I somebody said I should check it out while I'm there. I'm like, okay, whatever, and I went to the Nintendo booth and I played it, and it was it was definitely one of the standout games there. You know, it was definitely like, okay, let's check out what this game is. Let's see uh, what everybody's talking about and why it's cool on Switch. And I played it, and the, the combat alone sold me, and the movement and the traversal. Uh, and, like, they're, they're, one of the devs was there, and I was asking them about it and stuff. And, like, I, wasn't, I couldn't really get it at first because it's, like, it's a lot to take in, right? You have to, like, uh. really play it and to understand. And when you... Like, a 15-minute demo did not do this game any justice, but just moving and playing around and, and really just... Just really, uh... Wait, I spent all my cells. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, well... Oops, okay. Uh, but it... Just w running around and playing it, it just felt really good. Like, it feels like a good Castlevania game, right? It, that's, yes. That's what it feels like, and so... Uh, yeah, man, it's just it's awesome. I'm loving. I I've been loving every minute of it. Yeah, it it does something that just it's one of those it just hooks you. You just it takes a while to get, it, but it get keeps hooked, you. You get hooked on the progression because you're like you get a little yes. bit farther every time, and you're like, okay, just one more round and. Like, the second night I had this game, I'm like, okay, I'll just do one more run. And I got a little bit farther. I'm like, okay, just one more run. To the point where it was like two or three hours later, and I was like, oh, shoot, I need to go to bed. Because <laughs> it's super late. Right. So. And, I, and I think those people who are a fan of the Soul games, uh, the Soul genre, I should say, they kind of understand the mechanics of... You know, you gotta you gotta grind and you gotta die in order to make progress. Where this just simplifies it and makes it fun. It's just it like it catches you. You just like I need more of this. Yeah. And also, and I think it's also it's a great game to literally watch people play. Yeah, especially on like streams and stuff. Like people, yes, people have gotten really good at this game to the point where they can like, <laughs> they can get to like the bosses and stuff and like, I, I don't even know. They're just people just get really good at games and it's always fascinating to see. Yes, which ones are are gonna stream well and this is definitely one of those games. Especially with like, the PC version has a streaming mode in it where like the 
depending on what the people in the chat say, they can control the enemies and control, like, what the next map is going to look like, you know? Which is a really cool idea. Yeah, it, it turns... To me, that just screams, like, this is when online is at a different level, you know? Yeah. Of, of challenge. It's just that, hey, if you think you got it, show us. Yeah, and I think I think the Xbox and PS4 versions have the Twitch thing in it also because, you know, especially on Xbox One, like Mixer and Twitch are 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 built into the consoles. And, uh, yes. You know, it's 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 just cool to see that kind of stuff. The Switch version obviously doesn't have it because it's not built into the consoles, right? But uh, it's still. I, I still think Switch is one of the better places to play it, and like if you're gonna double dip, uh, the Switch version is definitely a version to get. Because I know people who have double dipped because they wanna, people wanna stream it, but then they wanna practice their runs on the Switch version, you know, for the next right. time around. And I know people have put, they're like, yeah, my prefer my primary place to play it is PlayStation, but I've put more time in on Switch because I can take it with me. So. Right, and it's like it to me personally. It's like kind of like uh, good practice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, before we're getting ready to wrap up the episode, but the one, the last thing I want to talk about is Motion Twin themselves. They've they're a they're like a small twelve man team who have they worked on this game for what like five or six years while they were helping other studios work on projects uh -huh. like the studio is it's 12 people everybody it's really interesting because they all get paid the same they all have ownership in the company it's like this really weird bizarre case of like everybody has a say on what happens in the game everybody has a, a say in what the company does next it's it's really kind of a cool idea you know uh -huh. In terms of how to build a, their studio and how they, uh, oh jeez, just how they build the like, the their kind of community, uh, you know, it's it's cool. I don't, man, I, it's really hard to talk and play at the same time. What is this crystal? Well, I think with with the great sales and great publicity this game is getting, um, like it's a easy contender for game of the year oh, yeah, and the reason sure. why and the reason why i say it's a great contender even though it's i know sometimes some people just like to say where early access games shouldn't count but i'm just like there's some there's some games that even if it's not early access it feels complete and i literally think that this game feels complete yeah like even before it came to console because it's there's a polish to it. Yeah, there's there's definitely like this game feels polished. And like when it, even when it came out on Switch, like even though I didn't really notice like the Ooh, what is this? This sounds cool. Ooh. I got a cool sword. Ah oh, crud. I don't know what it does, but it's cool. What do I need? Wolf trap? No. That sounds cool. Oh yeah, that's the. All right, sweet. Nice. Okay. The only thing I need is health, and I don't have any. So. <laughs> uh. But this game, it, it feels really good and. Like the Switch version is a great place to play it, and even if you're, in, even if you don't want to play it on Switch, play it somewhere else because it is, it is definitely one of those games. Ah! That are, it's de that was the sound of Ed dying, I think. Uh, yes. It's definitely, even if you're not into roguelikes at all, like me, <laughs> like it is <laughs> definitely a fun game to play and definitely something that I think deserves recognition, which is why we put it in an indie showcase. So. But that's all. That's all I really had to say about this game. Uh, anything else you want to say before we wrap up, Ed? Uh, yeah. Pick up uh, Dead Cells. Uh, if you can find you a physical copy, pick one up. If not, uh, you know, 
do get it on uh on an indie uh eShop. Yeah. Nindy eShop. It's a little bit more expensive than most Nindies. It's twenty four ninety nine on Switch, but uh like I said, it's it's on <laughs> It's on sale a lot, and it's 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 worth the twenty five bucks. Like I said, I, right? I mean, I bought it twice, so I bought the physical and the digital versions. So, uh, trust me, I was on Amazon. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, that's where I'm buying it at. <laughs> yeah. So, it's a it's a it's a great game, and uh, I I highly recommend it to everybody. So, uh, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Indie Showcase. Remember. You can find Indie Showcase all throughout January and February. Uh, season 1 is totally on demand. This is Season 2. Uh, check out all of our content on NGRRadio.com and subscribe to Nintendo Power Block's YouTube page and download Nintendo Power Block every Tuesday at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, check out some Nindies. Yes. Bye, everybody. Look, you in the zone too. <laughs>